you, know, you have a reputation nationwide for the uh, progress and innovation you've brought to Wisconsin in terms of not just motivating voters, but getting the wins. Uh, I've spoken to other state chairs and they all point to Wisconsin and they say that's the way it should be done. Uh, for the viewers that I have that are not familiar with Wisconsin, to call some of the last few races close is an understatement. We are talking near photo finishes here. Can you replay some of the final tallies in elections between, say, 2016 and 2020? Very happy to do that. So in 2016, Trump beat Hillary Clinton by just over 23,000 votes. Uh, it was a, I think, 0.7% margin of victory in a, in a statewide, it was the tipping point state. So it was actually the state that put Trump over the top, very painful. And fast forward to 2020, I spent the whole year telling people, Wisconsin is the land of the nail biter. At that time, three out of the previous five presidential elections had come down to less than one percentage point. And there were these national polls that showed Democrats way ahead. You know, we were supposed to win by five, seven, 11. One poll said we were 17 points up. None of us believed a word of it in Wisconsin, because although there was huge enthusiasm and energy on our side, we could also see a ton of energy on the Republican side, voters coming out of the woodwork, people registering in areas where registration numbers had never been so high. So we fought all the way to the end. And sure enough, once again, 0.6 percentage point margin. We won by 20,682 votes after the recount. And uh, that's the way it is. Elections here come down to a, a hair's breadth. A single gust of wind can affect the statewide election in Wisconsin. And both sides know it, so both sides do everything they possibly can do. And it's an up uphill battle every time, but we've won 11 out of the last 12 statewide elections for the Democrats in Wisconsin. Wisconsin always reminds me of a baby you put up on the couch and you wait to see which way you <laughs> fall over, as <laughs> you never know. Fascinatingly, the Republicans also had no idea. You could see in the state legislative races, there were a bunch of races where the polling showed the Democrat way ahead. And we saw Republicans pull money from those races to focus on other races the polls said were tied. Uh, we actually kept investing in some of those races and we wound up winning them by a tiny, tiny margin. One of the assembly seats, we won by 89 votes. In the state assembly, one race, if Republicans had gotten 590 more votes, they would have a supermajority in the state Senate now. But they pulled out of those races and focused on other races instead that Republicans won by big margins. So both sides had the polling wrong. Um, the, the takeaway for us is to go into the election paranoid that everything can go wrong and prepare for the worst case scenario while fighting for the best. You mentioned that potential supermajority. Uh, if the Republicans were to have that, uh, how would that have limited Democratic Governor Evers in terms of what he would be able to do, and, and I'm speaking specifically of uh, voter suppression kind of stuff, that supermajority would have basically wiped out his potential to do anything to stop it, correct? That's right. So Tony Evers is sort of the Clark Kent of voter protection. He's this mild-mannered guy. He's very calm and even keeled, uh, but he's actually this superhero when it comes to protecting voters against a Republican party that is trying to shred voting rights in our state. They've passed six different voter suppression bills already since 2020, and the governor has vetoed every one of them. So because we beat them back, uh, when the governor vetoes something, it stays vetoed. They can't override it. And that's why Republicans are now obsessed with beating Governor Evers, because if they can't do that, they can't actually pull off a nationwide coup to overturn the 2024 election. They just don't have enough states. Uh, the Wisconsin governorship is, is like the seawall that stops the Republican coup tide from flowing in. And uh, and for those who, who are not aware, um, Tony Evers is up for re-election in, in 2022. <laughs> he was the guy who eked out that win against Scott Walker that race was phenomenally close as well. Um, so w he's critical. Getting him reelected is critical to Democrats succeeding in Wisconsin. Is there any race more critical? So I will say that from the perspective of preventing the breakdown of American democracy, the three most important races in the country are the governorships of Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. If we hold on to those three governorships, Trump can't steal the 2024 election. And the closest of those three by a lot, is the Wisconsin governorship. Gretchen Whitmer won by 10 percentage points in 2018. In, in Pennsylvania, the margin was 18 points. Wisconsin was 1.1 percentage points in 2018. If we hold Tony Evers in, if we if we reelect Tony Evers in Wisconsin, it blocks Trump. So that's our number one priority. Everything you're talking about spells one thing to me, which is more so in Wisconsin than in any other state, 
one volunteer can truly make the difference between a win and a loss for Democrats. Would you agree with that? That's absolutely right. In Wisconsin, I mean, you could spend a couple hours a night between now and election day and call more voters than the margin of victory in the governor's race in the in the last two presidential elections. It's wild. Uh, what we've been finding, for example, is that there's tons of Democrats who voted absentee in 2020. You can request your absentee ballot now for the entire year. So just call people who voted absentee in 2020 and you can drive up the vote for November right now. You don't have to wait. And that the, the impact, it feels like I'm using a lot of superhero metaphors, but it does feel like having a superpower to be able to affect elections that have enormous national consequences, control the Senate, and that means the Supreme Court and the, the governorship, which can affect who gets to the White House um, and, of course, the lives of everybody in Wisconsin. So what we're doing right now is getting out the vote for local elections that affect whether a democracy functions. And at the same time, because you're requesting your absentee ballot for the whole year, we're getting out the vote for the, the Senate and the governor's races in the fall and state legislative races and congressional races. So it's like quadruple the value of a normal volunteer hour right now to, to help Wisconsin Democrats. Every dollar that you that you contribute, every hour that you pour into this work can make a difference that will echo through the entire country for the next several decades.